Entertainment Extra continues with movie critic Richard Krause on News Talk 1010. Hey, movie lovers and citizens of Earth, welcome to Extra Entertainment Extra. I'm Richard Krause. Uh, Terry Hart has toddled off back to TMN, but joining me in the studio, I'm very pleased to have Colin Mockery join me. Good to see you. Nice to see you. You know Colin from uh, Whose Line Is It Anyway? This hour is 22 minutes. Are you smarter than a Canadian fifth grader? Uh, You also now know him as an author. Uh, his new book, Not Quite the Classics, is in fine and not so fine bookstores everywhere right now, also online and everywhere it's possible to buy books. You can find this book. And uh, I wanted to to start, well, well, let's start with the book. All right. Um, it, it's a very funny, but it's a little different than I thought a book by Colin Mockery would be. So it's based on an improv game. So start mm-hmm. there. All right. It's, uh, as you say, based on an improv game called First Line, Last Line. And in that game, you get the first and last line from the audience. So you have your beginning and end point, and then you make up the middle. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's 12 short stories. Every short story begins and ends with the first and last line from a famous novel, and then the middle uh, veers off a little. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and what was your technique in, in terms of doing this? I mean, um, when I say it's not quite exactly what I, I thought, I is most of it is very, very funny, but there's also very poignant moments in here. There's things in here that... that uh, uh, from having seen your work on This Hour's 22 Minutes and, and Whose Line Is It Anyway in Live, um, I didn't expect. Yeah, I didn't want it to be um, a wacky Whose Line type of book where right. it's just uh, non sequiturs and uh, goofiness. I, there are a couple of stories like that, but I actually tried to write, <laughs> <laughs> which uh, is more difficult than I, uh, I assumed it was going to be. So, um, I mean, a lot of them have a, a, a genre or a style to it, um, which is something, you know, in improv, we sort of have a backlog of all of this mm-hmm. crap in our heads that we can pull out at any time. So I tried to be true to whatever style I was writing and uh, also tried to make it funny. So it, it, it was probably the most work I've ever done in my life. Really? Uh, I hated every second of it. I don't know how you people do it. I'm sitting across someone who's done nine books, a tenth on the way. I am exhausted from coming up with this crap. Yeah, well, you know what? Once you get bitten by it, though, I bet you the, this time next year we'll be sitting here talking about your second book, I bet. It'll have to be like childbirth, where I totally forget what, what has happened and, and just jump in again. One of my favorite uh, local guys who does improv, Nug Nargang, mm-hmm. uh, told me once that it, to be adept at doing improv to be, you know, on top of it all, you have to really be like a pop culture sponge. You have to drink everything in. And it reminded me of that when you just said, you know, we're writing within genres and stuff. So you have to familiarize yourself with all that. Mm-hmm. But do, do you find that to be the, the, the thing you have to, I mean, you have to be able to make a Miley Cyrus wrecking ball joke, even if you're not a Miley Cyrus fan. Absolutely. You got to keep your finger on the pulse because those are suggestions you get from the audience. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, of course, these days you're getting a lot of Rob Ford stuff, which is hard. <laughs> you know, you, you have to be involved with that. You you can't just uh, hope it, uh, it comes to you later. So right. you, you do have to, uh, and I'm a big movie buff, so, you know, my first memories are of watching movies, and um, every genre, every actor just sort of um, sunk into my consciousness so I can use it at any time. I grew up in a really small town, and we were far, far away from any major city, anything. And But there was a huge movie theater there for some reason, and we used to get things... Uh, that weren't playing anywhere else. We, we we saw whatever nobody else wanted, but it meant that you could go see a double feature and it would be like Andre Tartovsky's Stalker, a three and a half hour weird Russian science fiction movie with no subtitles and Enter the Dragon. So you'd see a little bit of everything. You never knew really what you were going to get. And it opened my mind to a lot of things. Oh, my favorite... The- my favorite double bill that I saw was West Side Story and The Car, which was James Brolin about a possessed uh, car. It was uh, the oddest double bill I, I'd ever seen in my life. Uh, speaking with Colin Mockery, his new book, Not Quite the Classics, uh, is in bookstores right now. Um, tell me uh, just a little bit about writing this, because I see uh, you as, I know that you say in interviews, and, and I get a sense from you that you're kind of shy, mm-hmm. which I don't see when you're on stage, but... Um, uh, be on stage and getting that feedback seems very important to the way that you work. When you're writing, it's a completely different thing. Totally different. You know, on stage, you're bouncing ideas off people. You can tell from the audience right away whether mm-hmm. it's working or not, so you can, you know, change gears. Uh, when you're by yourself, and especially if you're writing a funny book, I mean, all I have is me. So <laughs> I'm looking at, at, yes, it's amusing me, but um, is it amusing me in the right way? And um, I found I just had to forget get that and just uh, write what I thought was funny and hope that there's enough of an audience out there to (laughs) buy this. Right. Now, what kind of things make you laugh? Uh, You know, I I think of uh, sitting in the back of comedy clubs with comedians 
and no, comedians don't really laugh at other comedians. They'll say, oh, that was very funny. Yeah. And they, they kind of see the math in it sometimes. You know exactly, what I mean? Like, exactly. Yeah. And so uh, tell me, what makes you laugh? Um, oh, it's so sad. I love when people hurt themselves. <laughs> I was a big slapstick fan. You right. know, I loved Abbott and Costello and Laurel and Hardy. Um, I loved the uh, road movies, yeah. uh, Dick Van Dyke, Jack Benny. Um, anyone who made me laugh, uh, I would sort of steal from them and, and, and try to use it in my, my work. But slapstick has always been, um, it's sort of gone away now. It's, it's, mm-hmm. it, the Farrelly brothers still, I think, yeah. every now and again, come up with something like it, that. It's hard to come up with good slapstick. Mm-hmm. Uh, slapstick will will surprise you. And, of course, I love witty stuff, too. You right. know, Noel Coward and Oliver Oliver Wilde. No, yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> Oscar Wilde. Oliver's uh, Oscar's less-known brother. That's right. Well, you know, I think uh, slapstick sort of morphed into something else when the jackass guys came around. Yeah. And all of a sudden, like, they're nailing their foreheads to the wall. And that's <laughs> now, that's the new slapstick. It's not the same. <laughs> it's absolutely. That one, those ones just make me cringe. Right. Because. Uh, although I think if it actually happened in real life, I'd laugh. Yeah, yeah, it is always funny when somebody falls down. Oh, as long as it's not you. I think Mel Brooks said that. It's comedy when you fall down and kill yourself. It's tragedy when I cut my finger. That's right. <laughs> when did you know uh, that improv was going to be your specialty? Oh, I, um, it still surprises me uh, <laughs> because this was not an occupation when I grew up right. being an improviser. I, it was just something I loved doing. And, you know, if it wasn't for Whose Line... God knows what would have happened to me. So luckily this one show came along that showcased my one specialized skill <laughs> and gave me a career. So uh, I, I guess pretty much once Who's Line happened, I thought, oh, this is something I can do. And then the tour happened with Brad, and uh, we've been doing this for 10 years now. So Yeah, you still, I mean, you were just in Australia? Yeah, we've been to Australia. We were in India a couple of years ago. How and... did, now, culturally, how, did, how was that? I know. Well, we, you know, you, you try not to psych yourself out because they brought us over there, so obviously Obviously, then they know what the show is, right. and uh, it, it has a large following there. But we were a little nervous because it is an incredibly different culture. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first suggestion we got was fart. Really? So then we felt, uh, oh, okay, we're in. <laughs> this is I something can do we this. can deal with. <laughs> That's what I guess if they're fans of the show, you know, they, they have an idea of how it works. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's not like political uh, humor mm-hmm. or we're doing satire. It's just goofy. And I think goofy is universal. Yeah. Goofy is universal. So uh, we're speaking to Colin Mockery. The book is called Not Quite the Classics. When we come back, uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about the book. And we're going to talk about some of the very specific stories uh, that go into the creation of the book. The book, once again, Not Quite the Classics. And you're listening to Extra Entertainment Extra. <laughs> It's Extra Entertainment from Entertainment Extra with Richard Krause on In-Depth Radio, News Talk 1010. Hey, movie lovers and citizens of Earth. Welcome back to Extra Entertainment Extra. I'm Richard Krause. Joining me in studio, we have Colin Mockery of Whose Line Is It Anyway? Um, uh, This hour is 22 minutes. Are you smarter than a Canadian fifth grader? And now you can add author to his resume. Colin Mockery, not quite the classics, is in bookstores right now. Um, Also, I wanted to talk about art. As well, which is oh, a show yes. that you did at the Canadian stage uh, a little while ago. Um, tell me a little bit about because I know that you had done uh, some straight acting. I guess you is that is that yeah. condescending? I hope no, it no. isn't. No, I no, hope it no. isn't. It's, uh, real acting, I call it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, previous to this, and you know, I, I would imagine that the work that you did with Second City, you know, mm-hmm. w- was was a little different than the work that we know you best for. But tell me a little bit about this because this isn't. Uh, there are lighter moments in it, but it's not a comedy. No, it was. Um... It was um, uh, Morris Panitch who I who actually I was exposed to improv through him. The mm-hmm. first improv I ever saw, uh, Morris was part of the, the group that was doing it, and he's a, a very talented director. And uh, uh, Pete Donaldson, who uh, a great Shakespearean actor, he uh, his wife uh, Sheila McCarthy and my wife have become very close on. Um, uh, Little Mosque on the Prairie, and we were out at a Mother's Day brunch. And they sort of cornered me and said, we want to do this show, Art, and we'd like you to be in it. And I hadn't uh, acted, real acted, in uh, 20 years. <laughs> like Lured Lines acted. And, yeah. you know, it was sort of um, daunting because I'm, Morris is a great director and Peter was such a great actor. Uh, but um, I find when I say yes to things that scare me, uh, they usually work 
well, they work out in some way. Either mm-hmm. I learn something or <laughs> they actually are a great experience. And this, I have to say, was a great experience. Uh, Pete, uh, unfortunately, passed away a couple of years ago. At the time, he was doing chemo. He was doing chemo in the morning, then we rehearse art, and then at night he was uh, doing a George uh, F. Walker play. Wow. But he, uh, I learned so much. He and uh, Evan Buehling, who was the other actor in the piece, uh, were, and they were very uh, comforting to me. They were very, made it very safe for me. Right. And uh, I learned so much in that production, and I was so happy that I did it. Was there... Uh the added pressure of doing something completely different or was there kind of a sense of I don't have to go out there and make up the lines I there know exactly that. what I'm doing every <laughs> there night was I mean... the comfort in knowing that I didn't have to do uh, anything except uh, do the lines mm-hmm. there my biggest worry and it wasn't really a worry it was just I was afraid people were going to come f- to see it for the wrong reasons right um, but I, I think the people who did see it were pleasantly surprised that I didn't destroy it <laughs> and uh, it was a really good production so I was uh, very proud of it and very happy of my work and uh, again uh, the other two guys were amazing speaking with Colin Markery the author of not quite the classics in bookstores right now um, there's something about improv that has always been a bit of a conundrum to me in the sense that it is free you can go pretty much wherever you want, but it's very structured at the same time. There are games that you play. There are very strict rules to those games. And so I, I've never really understood where it falls. What What is it that appeals to you? Is it the structure of the games or is it the freedom that those games allow you? It's finding a mix. I mean, you, you don't want to get hemmed in by the structure because that can be just as bad as doing uh, like a bad play over and over. So you're, you're trying to um, be as free as you can. You, the structure is sort of a foundation for the scene, and right. then that gives you the rules, and then from there you can pretty much go anywhere. Um, that's the beauty of it, and I've been, you know, incredibly fortunate in having worked with great people. Mm-hmm. So we just, you know, go off in these tangents, and um, you know, someone's always going to be in charge. Uh, that's the best thing about it. And and the rules, uh, there are things like you never say no, mm-hmm. if, uh, which you can explain, but more. But uh, if someone comes up to you and says, uh, you know. I hear your dog just died. You don't say, no, he didn't. Yeah, because you can stop the scene right there. Right. So. We basically do everything in improv that you're supposed to do in life, but don't. You're supposed to listen, <laughs> you accept people's ideas, and you build on it, and you work as an ensemble. So right. uh, it's actually good to apply those to real life. And, you know, we've just got 30 seconds left in this segment. We'll be back with more with Colin Mockery, not quite the classics. When I watch Whose Line Is It Anyway, mm-hmm. um, I think it's so funny, they must be have thought of some of this previous to camera. And I know people have said this probably every improviser is tired of this question, but you don't, do you? You don't. Uh, We're at this point now, for me, my job is to go on stage with absolutely nothing. And that's where the magic comes. We, Brad and I, we've been doing our show for 10 years and we found when we're out outside of our comfort zone, that's when the show works the best. Right. Colin Mockery in studio right now talking about not quite the classics on Extra Entertainment Extra. You're listening to Entertainment Extra. Now more with movie critic Richard Krauss on In-Depth Radio, News Talk 1010. Hey, movie lovers and citizens of Earth, welcome back to Extra Entertainment Extra. I'm Richard Krauss. Joining me in the studio, as this music might indicate. Oh, I love that song. <laughs> does, it, does it give you a little knot in it your does. stomach? I, you know, I, when the American came, I, I, had no, I still have no idea what the American theme song was. But the, that one, uh, yeah, the, the British one sticks in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Whose line is it anyway? Uh, you know him from This Hour is 22 Minutes, the host of Are You Smarter Than a Canadian Fifth Grader? And now, as an author with a book called Not Quite the Classics, which is in bookstores right now, um, the book is a collection of stories based on an improv game where you take the first and last line of stories that are Mm well-known, that we would know, and then you go off on tangents in between and then tie it all together. Um, You say that you're uh, influenced by the writings of everyone from Charles Dickens to Stephen King to Dr. Seuss. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting interesting grouping of writers. (laughs) It is. I'm eclectic. Uh, Well, Dr. Seuss was the first book I remember reading, and uh, I was a voracious reader uh, when I was younger. It was the first book I read my son, so I had to sort of include that in the collection. And, you know, Charles Dickens through school, Stephen King, mm-hmm. uh, especially when you travel a lot. It's a great travel book. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because you are on the road. We've been trying to get you in the studio here for about three weeks. And I'm sorry, Colin's in Australia. I'm sorry. he's away. You're you're away a lot. Yeah, it's good um, because I'm working. So, well, so it's I, nice. I, I have a, a freelancer's rule, the ATM rule, which is always take the money. So, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, as long as there's no clowns or nudity involved, I will take the money. Oh, I don't have that rule. I should put that in. <laughs> 
Uh, so the book, uh, what are your favorite pieces in the book? Um, well, there's a couple. I, I, I like the Sherlock Holmes one just mm-hmm. because I thought that was going to be the most difficult one to write. And it was actually, uh, it flowed the easiest uh, for me. And I, I, I think I captured the stuff. This is where I get really Canadian, where I, well, <laughs> I have to talk nice about myself. Uh <laughs> That and I like the uh, the one on Frankenstein about the unlikely uh, friendship between a man and his chicken because I thought I did the chicken character very well. It's very uh, touching, I find. <laughs> Well, I found anyway. I I hope people uh, can be touched by a chicken. <laughs> touched by a chicken. <laughs> that, <on> yeah. Fox. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the book has been well received. You have some great quotes here. What what did you think would happen? I was telling you just before we went to air when my first book came out. Uh, I'd always wanted to write a book, and they sent over a box of like twenty five or twenty copies or whatever. And I sat and stared at that box for a very long time because once you open the box for that first time, it's over. Yeah. And then the the dream is over. Um, what do you hope for this book? Uh, I hope that people buy it, basically, <laughs> and uh, I hope they get a couple of laughs out of it. Uh, people have uh, who have got, had it uh, said they enjoyed it, and everyone <laughs> says the same thing. I was so surprised. Um, so <laughs> that I hope people are surprised and enjoy it, because uh, it's, it's a fun book, I think. Have you kept writing? I mean, I know you said that it was dreadful and hard and that sort of hell, thing. It was but, hell. <laughs> <laughs> but have you kept, since finishing this book, do you find yourself going back a little more often and uh, tapping things out? No. Yeah. But I have thought about it, <laughs> which is something I'd never done before. Right. So I, I've actually been uh, having a few ideas about, uh, you know, screenplays or, um, or something. So, uh, you know, it, it may have awakened some horrible beast in me. <laughs> we, you said earlier about uh, challenge, and we talked about doing the play art. Uh, um, and, you know, you've got a movie coming up that we were just talking about mm-hmm. off mic. Do you um, envision a time when you don't do improv, when you say, you know, that's something I've done and I'm going to try something else now and, and, and really concentrate on, you know, writing another book or doing something like that? Or is it just so ingrained in you that you, it's your preferred method of For me, it's the most fun thing I do because, um, the onus is on us. We don't have executives saying, you know, you should have a Hispanic neighbor or something. Right, it's just right, right. We succeed and we fail on our own merit. And I, I like that. There's nothing worse than doing a project you think is great than seeing the, final thing after it's been um, improved by people and go, what, what happened? <laughs> so I, I I think I will always do improv, Just be, first of all, just because I love it, and it's always fun and it's always different, but it also I, I love being in charge of my own destiny. And you're shooting a new season of Whose Line Is It Anyway in January? Yep. Which is exciting. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Aisha Tyler's a new host. Uh, everyone's coming back. So, it, you know, again, two weekends out of the year, and it's the most fun you can have. I find Aisha Tyler hilarious. She is hilarious. And she's, you know, a bit of a looker. <laughs> she is that. <laughs> My guest in studio has been Colin Mockery. Uh, the book is called Not Quite the Classics. It's uh, fine and not so fine bookstores everywhere. Whose line is it anyway? Uh, the new season is being taped soon, which means it's going to be coming your way very soon. Colin, thanks so much for oh, coming. Thank you so much for having me on. I can finally make it. Yay!